the law of prosperity. There are laws. How many of you realize there are spiritual laws? Absolutely. Just like there are natural laws, there are spiritual laws. And God's prosperity, abundant provision, which as Pastor Vincent was touching on this morning, the purpose is to have an abundance for every good work. And God's got a work for you to do. Amen. How many of you realize God's got a work for you to do? Praise God. Now, whatever that work is, it's not going to be done out of lack. It's going to be done, done out of abundance. First place, of course, you're going to need the anointing. You're going to need the supernatural equipment to get the job done. Say this after me. The anointing is the supernatural equipment to get the job done. Right, so you're going to need the supernatural equipment to get the job done. That's the anointing. That's the supernatural empowerment, the supernatural equipping, the supernatural provision, the grace, the empowerment. It is he who gives you power to create wealth. So you're going to need the anointing, and especially, especially if you're going to prosper for kingdom's sake to do the work of the kingdom, you're going to have to have the, have to, have to, have to have the anointing because you don't want to go out there. It's a, it's. Shark infested waters. And you're going to have to have the power of God because if you do, if you are able to create wealth, to sustain it, you're going to have to have the anointing. Because the enemy is going to come after you to try to steal it from you, or he's going to come after you to try to get you, get your eyes off of what God has for you. So you're going to have to have, to have the anointing, not only to get it, but then to protect it. You know, and then you're going to need the wisdom. Because, you know, I ask people, you know, if, if you got a couple of million dollars, what are you going to do with it? I mean, and then the other thing is, where are you going to put it? And how, you know, you're going to need to have the wisdom to, to, to manage it, to maintain it, to steward it. Amen? Amen? How many of you realize that? We are stewards. God never planned that we should live in poverty, either physically, mentally, or spiritually. And many people are mentally bankrupt. Mentally, mental poverty. Their, their minds are bankrupt. Their thought life is bankrupt. They're not just financially bankrupt. They're mentally bankrupt. They're emotionally bankrupt. They're physically bankrupt. You know, and, and we are living in times of great danger where great poverty, lack, Physical, mental, and spiritual is coming upon the world because that's the purpose and agenda of the enemy. He wants people in total abject poverty, defeat, lack, torment, suffering, no peace, no joy. And that's what he's doing. But God is working for us to live in the blessing. He's promised the blessing. Amen. He told Israel that he would make all nations come to borrow from them. Right? He said, you will not borrow, but you'll lend to many nations. Now, you know, lending to nations is going to need more than 10 bucks. Nations don't deal in thousands, even, you know, tens of thousands, a hundred. They deal in the millions and in, in billions. Hundreds of millions and billions. So, and, the, and then he said, all nations will call you blessed. You'll be the head of the nations financially. And that was their covenant. As long as they served God, the covenant was fulfilled. <clears throat> as long as they served God and they stayed in their covenant rights, God blessed them. And what is covenant? Another word for covenant is partnership. Marriage is a covenant. It's a partnership. Right? Same thing. Our covenant with God is a partnership. God has chosen to partner with us. Amen. Say this after me. God is my partner. I'm in covenant with God. I'm in partnership with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does that mean? He shares his wealth, which is wealth of knowledge, wisdom, power, anointing, everything with you. Isn't that amazing? That like God has chosen to share all his wealth, all his abundance, all his power, wisdom, life, 
anointing with us. That's the covenant. Amen. And when we go into partnership with him, we have to learn his way of doing things, conducting business, because there's a certain way that he operates. And he, that's why he says, if you will obey my commandments, my statutes, listen to my word and do as I've commanded you and as I've spoken to you and do according to what I have told you to do, which is his way of doing things, you will be above all nations. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. So there's, and, and that's exactly what it is. What does it mean to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness? It's his way of doing things, the right way of doing things. There's a right way and a, there's a wrong way. Many Christians, they do it the wrong way. And then they wonder why there's not, they're not blessed. You got to do it the right way. What is the right way? It's God's way. Amen. Amen. God's way of doing things is his way, his kingdom and his righteousness. Understanding his kingdom, having a kingdom mindset, knowing the principles of the kingdom and operating by those principles and doing things according to his word <laughs> and the leading of his spirit. Them that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. If you will do my commandments, hearken unto my word, do as I have commanded you, do as I have instructed you. Amen. God's word is profitable for what? Instruction in righteousness so that the man of God, the woman of God might be equipped with the word. So he... He gives us instructions and we take and those instructions reflect the character of God, his way of doing things, his way of conducting business, our personal business, our life, ministry. And then if we do it the right way, we cannot fail. It's impossible for you to fail. I'm not saying you won't have challenges, but you will overcome. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's impossible for you to fail when you do it God's way. And again, success is quite different. The way God views success is not the world, the way the world views success, because ultimately success is doing what God's called you to do. Amen. When you succeed in that, at the end of the day, well done, good and faithful servant, steward. You have stewarded what I've given you. You've done it the right way. Amen. And it has nothing to do with feelings. It has to do with decisions. It can't be led by feelings. Well, I just want to feel this way. I'll do it if I feel that way. I don't feel like it. You're going to have to take authority over those feelings that are contrary. And you're going to have to say, you know what? It doesn't matter how I feel. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to make the right decision. Amen. I mean, if you had to wait on feelings to do things, I mean, how many, I mean, uh, so there's going to be days when you're not going to feel like getting up Monday morning and going to work or whatever. Who cares? Not by feeling. We don't live by feelings. We live by faith. Faith is a decision. Faith is an action. Faith is being convinced and convicted of God's word and doing God's word. I believe it. That settles it. And I'm going to do it whether I feel like it or not. And whether I even understand it or not. Because we're now also living in a time where people would just want to understand. Lord, I just need to understand why you want me to do it that way. And I won't do it until I understand it. You know what? Sometimes the understanding comes when you start to do it. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to take a little jar of oil and keep pouring out of it into empty vessels. If you have to go by it making sense, you would never do it. You do it and then boom, the miracle happens. It doesn't make sense to take five loaves and two fish and make 5,000 families sit by 50s and 100s and then break it even into smaller pieces, put it in the hands of the disciples, and go say, go feed the people. It doesn't make any sense. 
but you do it, it doesn't make sense to fill the water pots with water and serve it at the wedding. And then all of a sudden it turns into fine wine and then, wow, where did this come from? Doesn't make sense to go put one hook down and catch one fish and find one shekel in its mouth. It makes no sense. God's word is not given to make sense. It's given to make faith. You do it in obedience. You do it God's way. You put the feelings aside. And you just do it. Just do it. That's our motto. Nike stole it from us. God said it. Just do it. Two-thirds of God's name is go, and the other two-thirds is do. Go and do. Likewise. Go and do. So you're going to... They asked Lester Summerall, who's gone home to be with the Lord now, and was a great, mighty man of God, a general in the faith, you know, used mightily of God. And then they asked him, what is the secret you know, 70 years of ministry, what's the secret to your success? He said, oh, that's easy. Every morning I got up and I went. Amen. That's it. He just did it. And there are going to be many days when you're not going to feel like doing it, but you're going to do it anyways. There's going to be many days when you're going to get frustrated, but you're going to do it anyways. There's going to be days when people, people are not going to show up. People are not going to do their part, but you're going to get up and do your part. And God's going to bless you. Because you have been obedient, you have been faithful, you have been a good steward. Steward not just your money, but your time. Yeah. Don't waste it. Invest it. Amen. Do the right thing that's going to get the right results, and there shall be fruit. Yeah. The fruit will come. Your breakthrough will come. It must come. It has to come. God said it would. It is impossible for you to do the word of God and not see a breakthrough. Don't tell me you're doing God's word and you haven't seen a breakthrough. You will see a breakthrough. If you're not seeing a breakthrough, maybe it's because you're not doing God's word. You're going by whatever you feel. You're being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine or feeling or teaching. God does not make failures. It is impossible for the God that's in you to fail. Christ in you is a hope of glory. Not a dread of failure. Come on, somebody. Amen. Say this after me. Christ in me gives me hope of glory, which is success. Right? Amen. And, and make no mistake about it. God is a God of success. He wants success. He wants his children to succeed. Any parents here today? Would you want your children to succeed? Which parent on earth would want their children to fail miserably? It's not a single earthly parent that would want their children to fail. What makes you think that God, the Heavenly Father, does not want you to succeed, that he would want you to fail? Absolutely not. God never fails, and he never wants his children to fail. Whatever he calls you to do, he's going to equip you for success, but you're going to have to participate. It is a partnership. You're going to have to do your part. You do his part, and he's going to do his part. And his part is always the greater part, because this is not an equal covenant. This is not an equal partnership at all. We put in like 1% investment. He puts in like 99% investment. Amen. Amen. He put, he's all in. That's right. He's all in. Yeah. He's in 100% from his perspective. Right. And what we do is just a small portion. A few, you know, but he's all in. And you got to be all in too. And he just wants your all. Whatever your all is, your best. Amen. So you got to be all in. Who's all in? I'm all in. I'm all in. All the way, fully. Sold out completely. 100% in. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 6 1. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter, the first verse, amplified classic. Laboring together as God's fellow workers. Laboring together as God's fellow workers. 
with him. Laboring together with him as God's fellow workers. So he labors, we labor. So there's no just sitting around and God's going to bless me. You're going to labor. You're going to do your part. He's going to do his part. He says, we beg you not to receive the grace of God in vain. So a lot of people use God's grace to be lazy. God's grace is not there to be lazy. God's grace is there to be diligent, to be able to do. Amen. We beg of you not to receive the grace of God in vain, that merciful kindness by which God exerts his holy influence on souls and turns them to Christ, keeping and strengthening them. So not only grace to save, but grace to keep and to strengthen them. Do not receive it to no purpose. I like the Amplified. So there is a purpose to God's grace. It's God's investment in you. It's God's deposit in you. Fellow laborers with him to what? To produce, to get results. Faith always gets results. Faith is always results oriented. And make no mistake that God wants results. Whatever he is invested in you, he wants it. He wants the fruit. He wants to see the fruit. And by the fruit that he is glorified. And what happens if you don't bear fruit? You're like that dry branch that's chopped off and thrown into the fire. So he wants to see fruit. Working together with him. Amen. This is um, much, this is a great undiscovered secret in Christian lives that we are working together with Christ. God's working in us to do a work in us and to do a work through us. Hallelujah. Say this, say this after me. I am working together, I am working together with, him. with Him. And He's working together, he's working together. With, me. with me. We are in partnership. That's a covenant. And what an amazing covenant it is to have God as your partner. It's not fair, exactly. That's where that unmerited favor comes in. That's right. It's the believer's privilege. We are privileged. When you're a believer in Christ, you are privileged. Amen. Go with me to the Gospel of John. Chapter 1 and verse 12. Amplify classic. But to as many as did receive and welcome him. Have you received and welcomed him into your life? Who has received and welcomed him? He gave the authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on him and his name. So you have been given authority, power, privilege, and right. It's called the believer's authority or the believer's right, the believer's power, or the believer's privilege. It's not fair. This year is going to be very unfair. You're going to be, you're going to, it's going to be very unfair. You're going to be so blessed. You're going to be so highly favored, privileged. You're going to be so, it's going to be so big. It's just going to be unfair. Unfair for others, unfair for the devil. It's just going to be really unfair. This year is going to be very unfair. We have an unfair advantage. And there ain't no person on earth, no devil in hell can match that equity. It's just going to be very uneven, very unfair blessing coming upon you all these blessings coming upon you overtaking you it's gonna be really unfair they're gonna gnash at the teeth foam at the mouth and they won't be able to stop it we just have such an unfair advantage it's called grace it's called supernatural favor and anointing it's unfair Get ready for a very unfair and very unfairly favorable year. Amen. It's going to be so big. 
people are going to get offended. They're going to get seriously offended with the blessing on you. And do not make excuses for the blessing. And do not be ashamed of the blessing. It's just going to be unfair. It's just going to be so unfair. It's just going to be ridiculous. It's going to be ridiculous. Ludicrous. There's going to be like hyper acceleration in your life. And people are going to get left in the dust. And they're going to just be very upset with you. Because you're going to be so highly favored. And so favored. And so <laughs> blessed and privileged as a child of the living God. Because <laughs> he's working together with you and we are working together with him. Go to 1 Corinthians 3. This is a good word tonight. I'm, I'm glad I came. Woo! Shabranga la basa keta la vaya la kanda. Woo! 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. The first book the first letter to the Corinthians, the third chapter, the ninth verse. <laughs> For we are fellow workmen, joint promoters. I like that, joint promoters. I mean, there's a promotion coming. Joint promoters, laborers together with and for God. You are God's garden and vineyard and field under cultivation. You are God's building. So you are a building project and God's building something amazing with you, a masterpiece. He's the great architect and engineer and he's got a plan, an amazing blueprint for your life that he's building. You are God's garden. He's the gardener. He's taking care of the lawn. He's watering the garden. I mean, he's fertilizing you and watering you and, and, and trimming you and pruning you and taking care of you. And I mean, you're going to turn into this amazingly beautiful garden. You're God's field. He's cultivating the land. He's breaking up the fallow ground. He's, you know, because if you think about it, you can't plant until you first dig and it looks like a big mess. You got to dig and stir the, the, the soil and everything. You can't plant on this flat, you know, hard soil. It's got to get broken up, right? And then he's cultivating you. You are a field under cultivation, a vineyard. Hallelujah. And he's working. What is he doing? He's working. He's working. And he began a good work in you. Not a bad work. It's a, it's a good work. He's begun a good work in you. And then he's prospering you to bring abundance into your life for every good work. Now that's just, that's not only the work he's doing, and the work you're doing, because we're working together. So that good work is not just you, but it's you and him together. We are us. We are together in covenant partnership. We're doing a good work. Co-laborers working together. And that good work, and as long as you're in the work, in the process, in the plan, in the assignment, God's blessing and provision begins to flow into your life and it overflows floods and there's an abundance hallelujah you're god's field a tilled land he wants to sow some good seed in your life and get a mighty harvest from you he's a very wise and prudent jew he wants a good return on his investment <laughs> 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 
When God is your partner, you cannot be a failure. His wisdom, his ability, his knowledge equals success. Come on, lift your hands and say this. His wisdom in me, his ability in me, his knowledge in me equals my success. Because my success is his success. His success is my success. Hallelujah. God created everything. The plants, the animals, the minerals, math, physics, chemistry, electronics, computers, electricity. He, he knows it all. He knows everything. Think about this when after Adam was created on the sixth day, he was not there through day one through five. He wasn't there when he created the animals, the plants. But the Bible says he brought, God brought all the animals before Adam in front of him, basically, after he breathed it into his nostrils. <sighs> what was that? Life. But it's also God's life. God's wisdom, ability, understanding, knowledge. He named all the animals. In other words, he knew what they were. He knew everything about them. He knew their classification. He knew their type. He knew he had supernatural knowledge of them just by a breath <sighs> coming into him. <Come> on. <laughs> The all-knowing one, the Holy Ghost, lives on the inside of us. That means, that's why he says, you have an anointing and unction from the Holy One. You know all things. First John 2, 20, you know all things. By the anointing, by the presence, the abiding presence, the in, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, you know all things. Amen. Now, that doesn't obviously mean you know all things, you know all things. You don't know all things about me, but you know all things about you. Everything you need to know about your life and your success and your assignment, you have it in you. So don't tell me, I don't know what to do. You know what to do. Yes. It's there, in there. Find it. Bring it out. Bring it forth. So for a spiritual Christian to say, I don't know what to do, it's actually speaking against the word of God. You know what to do. Not by only the word that's given to you, but by the Holy Ghost living in you. You should never say, I don't know what to do. You may say, I'm not clear on what to do right now, but I will know what to do very soon. I'll get it. I'll get it from the Holy Ghost. Is this helping anybody here tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to 1 Corinthians, the first letter to the Corinthians, the second chapter, 10th to the 12th verse. Well, let's read from 9, amplified. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen, ear has not heard, has not entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him, and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. So it says, because, you know, people read this, you know, in a religious way. Well, you know, the Bible says, you know, no eye has seen no ear has heard. No one has ever understood the things that God has in store. You know, God just works in mysterious ways. You just never know what he's going to do. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. I think you watch Forrest Gump too many times. You've got the Forrest Gump doctrine. That's complete. God moves in mysterious. No. Mysterious means hidden, secret, unknown. God does not know, move in mysterious ways. God moves exactly as he said he would according to his word. Amen. Whatever he said he will do, he will do exactly that. That only that he will do. There's no mystery to it. Mystery means hidden. And actually, 
It says in 1 Corinthians 14, when you pray in tongues, you speak out mysteries. You pray the mysteries of God. That means you, are, you actually are praying the mysteries, the hidden things into revelation. The things that are covered become uncovered. Because mystery means covered. It's like a covered dish. Lift the cover and see what's in there. It's pretty much that. The word mystery, mystery, mysterion just means covered, hidden, covered. Revelation means uncovered. So when you walk by revelation, you pray, you pray in tongues, you pray the mysteries of God and they, they become revealed to you. And that's exactly what it says. Look, look at the next verse. Yet to us, verse 10, God has unveiled, uncovered and revealed them. So whatever is a mystery becomes revealed to you. By and through his spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches. Diligently. Exploring and examining everything. Even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God. Bottomless. We're drinking from a bottomless. We're digging into a bottomless. We're supply from a bottomless. Little jar of oil was really a bottomless jar of oil. That's why he just kept pouring and pouring and pouring. <laughs> the lake with no fish was really a bottomless lake full of fish. And they came and filled the net and it was a net breaking boat sinking catch. Exploring, searching diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. For what person perceives, knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him? Just so no one discerns, comes to know and com comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have not received the Spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. Mm, that'll get you drunk right there. I mean, that's like ramba shakata la mandala. That, that is like high octane. It's like jet fuel, nitrous psh, acceleration. I mean, why was the Holy Spirit given to us? That we might, so we can get goosebumps and roll on the floor? No! So that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly. Bestowed on us by God. That's what the Holy Ghost is given to do so that we may comprehend and understand the bottomless profound things, the gifts bestowed on us lavishly, freely by God. Mm. That stuff is so powerful. I don't know. I just... Where do you see... Poverty in that right there. Tell me. We're talking about a lavish God who lavishly pours out favor and blessings and gifts. My, my, my. Yeah, brother, you know the word says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has entered into the heart of man. You know, the things that God has in store, you know, they're just so mysterious, you know, we just, you know. <laughs> we just crawl on our bellies. I thought that was the curse on the devil to crawl on his belly.
hold on, brother, hold on. Hold on. Someday, somehow, one day in the sweet by and by. Once we get to heaven, it'll be so good. But here now on earth, we're just going to suffer for Jesus. <laughs> Graduates of Forrest Gump University. Forrest Gump. My name is Gump. Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Got a doctor from Forrest Gump you, didn't you? <laughs> Life is like, like a box of the best. A sort of chocolate with the best tasting, the most quality ingredients ever. And I mean just absolutely perfectly crafted by the chocolatier from heaven. It has got flavors, powers of the world to come that you've never tasted. It is rich. Open it. It has got, oh my Lord, my God. <laughs> By the greatest confectioner, chocolatier, it is rich, it is amazing, you open it and it's profound and bottomless and <laughs> I don't know, I'm just telling you, it, 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 it's, it's more, it's just, it's too much. I think that's what Paul was saying, I don't have words to express what I've seen in third heaven. If you could come up there and see the wealth of God that I saw, the, the rich glory, the things that I saw, that I experienced, how do I even, it's beyond man's power to even express. When it comes to visions and revelations of the Lord, oh my. That's why he's praying so hard throughout his letters Oh God, open the eyes of their understanding that they may know the hope of your calling. They may see, know, understand the glorious, the riches in the glory of the inheritance you have for the saints. The surpassing greatness of power that's at work in them towards us. I mean, my God, give us that spirit of wisdom and revelation. Open the eyes of our understanding. Whew. I mean, look at, look at this prayer. Go to Ephesians. Man, I just can't get away from this. Sorry, Pastor Vincent. I'm supposed to receive the offering, but hey. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Amplified 17, Ephesians 1, I always pray to God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets. See, that's what revelation is. Insight into mysteries and secrets. In the deep and intimate knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. So that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. How rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. His set apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable. Unlimited, the bottomless. And surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which he, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be confirmed. So whatever titles are conferring on people, my God, Jesus is greater than all of them. His excellency Ambassador, great ambassador, major general prophet. Oh, a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Every title that can be confirmed, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. Now go to chapter 3. You ready? Because this is going to just get you smashed. If you don't get smashed after reading this, I don't know. Your wood is wet. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can't even read through this most of the time. Verse 14, for this reason, 
seeing the greatness of his plan by which you are built together in Christ, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's like, I'm on my knees praying for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that Father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and drives its name. May he grant you out of the rich treasury, there's that word rich again, rich treasury of his glory, to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. May Christ through faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love that you may have the power and be strong. Where do you see failure in that? <laughs> to apprehend and grasp, 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 grasp. With all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. What is the breadth, the length, the height, and depth of it? That you may really come to know, practically through experience for yourselves, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. That you may be filled What do you see empty in that? Filled through your all being. Through all your being. Unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence. And become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. It's one of the prayers Paul prayed. Take those prayers in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3. Pray them over your life every day. I guarantee you, you do that for the next month. Praying these every day, morning and evening over your life. You will never be the same again. Amen. Impossible for you to be the same again. Those are the prayers that get answered. And then, and that's, that's when the verse 20 happens. Now unto him. By and in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly. Is there even a word? God made up that word. Super abundantly. Abundant is just not enough. Super like hyper abundant. Like super abundantly. Far over and above all that we dare ask or think indefinitely or infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen so be it even this generation right here people this is where like I just feel like every time I read this yeah I I can't even I can't even do it justice I mean this, this is so deep and powerful the richest measure of the divine presence, being filled and flooded with God himself. And when you get to that place, and now, now that, has, now that that has happened, whoo, get ready. Now unto him who's able to do super abundantly anything you can ask or think or desire your highest dreams, prayers, so that he may get the glory. That's the law of prosperity right there. If anybody accuses me of being a prosperity preacher, guilty as charged. (laughs) Extreme prosperity. You preaching that prosperity gospel? Yes! We ain't seen nothing yet. We just scratched the surface. We don't even, I don't even know what I'm talking about when it comes to prosperity. I have, I don't even know. I think I've, I know like 1%. There's so much that God's going to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like. 
Because it says you have to experience it. So, Lord, I want to experience more. Like that super abundance, that abundant grace, favor, bottomless, profound, <laughs> rich measure. Pour it on me, Lord. Pour it on me. Pour it on me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just want to experience it more. I just read it, but I, Lord, I just scratched the surface. I know like that much. If it's bottomless, I've gone like 100 feet deep. <laughs> Things bottomless. <laughs> oh, Lord. Dip me in the kerosene of thy spirit. And set me ablaze that I may burn for you. <laughs> Get me out of my head. Get me in my spirit. That's why you, you cannot grab these things with your head. You, you just go, oh yeah, okay. Wonderful, that's great. <laughs> then what? That's why he's praying that the eyes of my spirit be flooded with light. Because it's got to happen in here, not up here. It's beyond your intellect. This is so big that your processor up here will freeze. <laughs> freeze up and then you get the, the wheel starts spinning and buffering, buffering, buffering. Uh, ran out of memory, processing power. CPU at 100%. Can't get it, can't get it. Get out of here, get down in here to that unlimited processing power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's like, uh, how, many, how, many, how many cores the chip have? It's unlimited cores. Ah, I got like... Eight cores up here, and it's frozen. You got to get down to the unlimited supercomputer of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The processing power of the Holy Spirit down in here mm. for your IT people. <laughs> Limitless, bottomless. Infinite cores. Infinite processing power. Knows all things. Just like that. In a split second knows the end from the beginning. And he lives on, in, on the inside of us. How can we not... How can we, how can we fail? How can we accept any kind of failure, poverty doctrine... So now you see it goes, has really very little to do with money, more to do with revelation and power of working in you. That's why John understanding this praise, dearly beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, be in health, even as your soul prospers. Mind, will, and emotions, your inner man prospering right down in here. Having the richest measure of the divine presence. And everything just overflows. Everything just flows out of that. It was like a Selah moment. <laughs> Selah. Think on that. Meditate on that. Father, I pray. Without the Holy, Holy Ghost, we're just hopeless. We have no clue what we're even talking about. But by the Holy Spirit, these things are revealed to us. And my prayer is that this year we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and bigger and bigger and bitter, bigger and, and higher and higher and wider and wider. Longer and longer, I mean, the length, the width, the height, I mean, in every dimension, 
that every dimension of our lives will overflow with blessings <laughs> that come from an uncontainable source of inner joy. Every dimension of our lives change us, expand us. We know nothing. We've done nothing. There's more. There's so much more. There's so much more. We're not satisfied. Take us to higher heights, deeper depths, bigger levels. Prosper your people, I pray. Do a mighty work in us. Release in us supernatural wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding. Power working in us, through us. This year, bigger, 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 bigger. More, 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 more. Overflow, overflow, overflow. Expansion, above and beyond anything we can desire, ask, or think. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost, we're desperate for you. Do a work, do a work, do a work. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So now you see, this has nothing to do with an offering teaching to get money. Because God's taken us where no offering can take us. God's taken us to where no money can take us. You can have all the money in the world. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, it means nothing. It's about the vision of God. It's about the plan of God. It's about the kingdom. It's about the work he's doing. It's about him wanting to accomplish things in and through us. What, what our lives are ordained for. What we have been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. The reason you were born. The reason you exist. The reason. The purpose. The divine purpose. For our lives. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.